the moon phases. All right, welcome to science class once again. Mr. Schweitzer here, uh, here to teach you about the moon, la luna. So first off, there's one source of light. So the sun is this one spot that produces a ton of light. So when you have one source of light and you have a sphere, you tend to have half of the object lit at all times and half of the object in darkness at all times. So, the moon is our satellite and it goes around the earth. Plain and simple. It revolves around the earth while the earth revolves around the sun. First off, we've got our moon. A very important aspect of the moon is that if you look from the top view, the moon is constantly 50% lit. And it may, may be obvious from your perspective, but you don't think about that all the time when you see the moon. So the moon is always 50% lit, but not from the Earth's perspective. So let's take a look at how the actual moon phases work. So, of course, the moon phases are caused by the revolution of the moon around the Earth. And we always have an Earth perspective because we're on Earth. I'm going to be the Earth. The sun is obviously right over there, that bright light. And here is our moon, a little wiffle ball attached to a nail. So let's watch as it goes around. So we start with our new moon. New moon is just about when the moon is right next to the sun, whether it's above, in front of, or below. When the moon is in front of the sun, we call this a solar eclipse because the sun is blocked. Solar eclipse. But a lot of the time, the moon is either going to be below or above it. And we just can't see it in the night sky because it's not the night sky. It is the day sky when there's a new moon. So the moon is actually right next to the sun in the sense of our viewing perspective. So let's see how the moon phases actually start. So which side of the moon lights up first, the left or the right side? So if you look from a topo view, the moon is going to go around the Earth in a counterclockwise revolution. And a counterclockwise revolution makes it so the right side of the moon lights up first. So I'm going to stop it right here. Check out the angle between the sun, earth, and the moon. If you just look at it, it's a right angle. How much of the moon is lit? Fifty percent of the moon. Now, a weird thing that we call this, you would think it'd be a half moon, right? No. We call this a quarter moon. Why would we call this a quarter moon? And let me just show you. I went from here to here. Call it a quarter moon because it's a quarter of the way through its cycle. Started as new, now it's a quarter of the way through its cycle and half of it is lit. Let's continue through our cycle. So the right side continues to get more and more bright until full moon. 
And we are in a full moon phase here. This is when you have the sun, the earth, and the moon in a line. The earth has to be between the sun and the moon. A lot of the time, the moon isn't blocked by the earth's shadow. But when it is, we call this a lunar eclipse. Lunar meaning the moon is blocked by a shadow. As we go past the full moon stage, the right side begins to get dark. And we are three quarters of the way through the cycle. How much of the moon is lit? Half of it. And I'm going to continue through. Notice that crescent shape. You see that beautiful crescent shape? You have to be able to draw that. So let's go through those phases again. We've got the new moon into a crescent. It's actually the waxing crescent. And then we are a quarter of the way through our cycle, which we call a quarter moon. The moon's actually half lit. And then we continue towards waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, quarter moon, third quarter, waning crescent, another new moon. An amazing thing about the moon that you probably have noticed is that we always see the same side of the moon constantly. So this blue dot in the middle represents the side of the moon that we see. So how does that happen? One revolution, aka one time that the moon goes around the earth, takes about 27.3 days. But it also takes the moon 27.3 days to do a rotation. The soft ball is the earth and this wiffle ball represents the moon. So there is the blue side that is always going to be facing the earth. So let's watch as the moon goes around the earth. So the blue side is always facing the earth. That's one full revolution still facing the earth. Now, did you see the moon rotate at all? If you could not tell that the moon was rotating, let's take a look from right above the moon as it goes around. So there's the blue side. Keep an eye on that. And I'm going to go around the earth. We're taking a look from the top. Blue side is facing the earth. One full revolution we're gonna do. And we got one full rotation. Both happen at the same time. 27.3 days for the revolution, 27.3 days for the rotation. All in the reference table. Here's where things get a little complicated. The moon goes around the earth, correct? And right there, boom, I'm back to the original position. That takes 27.3 days. But to go from a new moon around back to a new moon, takes 29.5 days. How can it take 27.3 days to do this and 29.5 days to do this? Well, this is where Earth's revolution comes in. So let's say I'm the Earth and I start over here. I'm in a new moon phase. As the moon goes around the earth, the earth revolves around the sun. Boom. Boom. 
back to where I started. Is the moon a new moon yet? No, that's because the Earth's revolution makes it so when the moon goes from here to here, my angle has not changed. I've done a full revolution. So the moon needs a little bit more time to catch up with Earth's revolution. So it needs to go from here to here. So let me show you from the topo again. Moon starts here, new moon, next to the sun. Goes around as the Earth goes around. Bam, back to where it was. You see me? So the moon needs an additional 2.2 days to go from here, boom, to here, as the Earth continues around its orbit.